The video you've just seen with that loud blasting sound is of history being rewritten. But this isn't the story of just one dam. Three others along the Klamath River have faced the same fate. These four monumental structures spanning the 263-mile-long Klamath River have defined the region for decades. But all are now a story of a past. But why is America has spent $450 million into dismantling these historic, once vital dams? What could justify such a dramatic reversal of purpose? This is I Am Civil Engineer, YouTube channel, and you're watching the untold story of the world's largest dam removal project ever undertaken. The Klamath River, a lifeline for many, is reshaping its identity. Stretching 263 miles from Southern Oregon to Northern California, the river serves as a vital artery, eventually meeting the Pacific Ocean. Its vast basin covers an impressive 16,000 square miles, an area equivalent to Switzerland. But the Klamath is more than just a river. It's a sanctuary for wildlife and a crucial resource for indigenous tribes who have thrived along its banks for thousands of years. Well, let's start the story from the very beginning. At the start of the 20th century, as the demand for clean and sustainable energy sources grew, the idea of damming the Klamath River was born. Between 1918 and 1964, four massive dams, J.C. Boyle, Copco 1, Copco 2, and Iron Gate, rose along the river. Built at a cost of $400 million in today's terms, these dams were engineering triumphs, generating enough power for 70,000 homes and providing water for agriculture in the surrounding areas. The four dams on the Klamath River, Iron Gate, Copco 1, Copco 2, and J.C. Boyle, played a significant role in the region's hydroelectric power generation and irrigation systems for over a century. Collectively known as the Lower Klamath Project, these structures generated 169 megawatts of electricity, sufficient to power approximately 70,000 homes across Southern Oregon and Northern California. Despite their contribution to renewable energy, the environmental and ecological costs of these dams ultimately led to their removal. The J.C. Boyle Dam, an embankment structure, stood 68 feet tall and was located at the uppermost section of the Lower Klamath Project. Its primary purpose was power generation, but it also disrupted the migratory routes of fish. This dam, like the others, contributed to warmer water temperatures and significant declines in fish populations such as salmon and trout, which are vital for the ecosystem and the sustenance of local indigenous tribes. Copco 1, the oldest of the four, was constructed in 1918. It was a concrete arch dam that, together with its smaller counterpart, Copco 2, stored water for irrigation and power production. Copco 2, the smallest at 33 feet tall, was a concrete gravity dam located just a quarter mile downstream of Copco 1. Despite their modest size, these two dams played a pivotal role in the overall project but severely hindered the natural flow of the Klamath River, leading to the loss of fish habitats. The Iron Gate Dam, the tallest and last to be completed in 1964, served as a key water storage and power generation facility. Its significant height and storage capacity, however, exacerbated issues such as warmer water temperatures and sediment buildup. This dam's removal marked a critical turning point in efforts to restore the natural flow of the river and revive the ecosystem. Before these dams, America relied heavily on coal, oil, and gas plants for energy. They were costly and inefficient. Inspired by Canada's success with hydropower on the Niagara River, the U.S. turned to rivers like the Klamath for renewable energy. The first dam was built in 1918, with the last completed in 1964, costing $400 million by today's standards. Ironically, Removing them now is costing roughly the same amount. Each dam served a purpose, energy generation and irrigation for the Klamath Basin's 1,800 producers. But these benefits came at a cost. For indigenous tribes living near the river, the Klamath is sacred. It was once the third largest salmon producer on the West Coast. But these dams disrupted natural fish migration, leading to a 90% decline in Chinook salmon and other species. Warming waters trapped behind the dams made conditions worse, with algae blooms and declining water quality. In 2002, low water flows and bacteria outbreaks killed 34,000 fish. 
The sight of motionless salmon lining the riverbanks was heartbreaking, a turning point for the Klamath tribes. Over decades, indigenous tribes and environmental groups campaigned to remove the dams. Companies like Pacificorp, which owned the dams, proposed alternative solutions, such as transporting fish by truck or building expensive fish ladders. However, the cost of these proposals far exceeded the price of removing the dams altogether, paving the way for a more permanent solution. In 2010, an agreement was finally reached to dismantle the four dams. The $450 million project was funded by a combination of sources. Pacificorp, which imposed a surcharge on its customers, along with contributions from the governments of California and Oregon. Years of meticulous planning went into ensuring the removal process would minimize environmental disruption and restore the river's natural flow. Removing a dam is no easy task. Crews started with Copco 2, the smallest. Before any demolition, billions of gallons of water had to be released gradually to minimize environmental damage. Sediments behind the reservoirs were tested and found to be safe for release. Excavators and cranes dismantled the structures piece by piece. Controlled blasting was used for thicker sections of concrete, ensuring minimal disruption to the ecosystem. The color of the river transformed from muddy brown to a brilliant blue, a sign of its revival. Restoration goes beyond demolition. Teams stabilized riverbanks, planted native species, and restored nearly 2,000 acres of habitat. Seeds from 98 species were harvested and grown in nurseries, including culturally significant plants like oak trees and lupine. It's expected that salmon populations will recover by 86% by 2061. Despite the success, not everyone supported the project. Communities around the dams lost lakefront properties, jobs, and tax revenue. Real estate values declined, and some residents opposed paying higher electricity bills to fund the removal. Pacificorp, however, maintained that dismantling the dams was the most cost-effective solution compared to maintaining the aging infrastructure. This isn't just an American story. Europe is also dismantling obsolete dams to restore ecosystems. In 2023 alone, over 500 dams were removed across 15 countries, signaling a global shift towards sustainable river management. The Klamath River's revival is a powerful reminder of the balance between human progress and environmental preservation. It's a story of resilience, not just for the river, but for the indigenous tribes who fought for its freedom. If you're inspired by this monumental achievement, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Let's continue exploring the intersection of construction and conservation, one story at a time.